talking to the youngsters there this morning, and I talked to Pastor Chuck the other day, and he said he was going to have a place in the program for the youngsters. This morning, <coughs> I'd like to talk to you about two little boys and how the Gideons affected their lives. The first boy A man he knew that he had a problem. But his solution to the problem was to run away from the problem. So he decided to move out west and make new friends. But he soon discovered that he could not run away from Satan. He got a right back in. One day, a Gideon walked by and slid a testament into his jail cell. He picked it up and threw it aside. But God had made a way to get his word in front of that young man. Day after day after day, he sat in that jail cell.
schools, colleges, and universities, the military, law enforcement, firefighters, EMTs, and attorney's offices, prisons, and jails. The Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 and 2, when writing to the church of Corinth, said to them, My brethren, when I came to you, I came not with excellency of speech or wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I am determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ, and Him crucified. The Apostle Paul was being led with the Holy Spirit, and his message about the plan of salvation was simple. The Gideon ministry was being led with the Holy Spirit, and the purpose of the Gideon ministry is simple lead men and women, boys and girls, to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Here in Lawrence County, we distribute Bibles to the youth at the fairgrounds every summer. A few years ago, Brother Percy Foxwell and I were distributing Bibles to the youth. This young carnival worker came up and began to talk to us. You could tell he was troubled. His eyes were in tears. We asked him if we could pray for him, and we did. And a few minutes later, he accepted Jesus Christ as his personal Savior. See, they, we were there to distribute Bibles to you, which we did. But you never know when God is going to put someone in your pathway that you can witness to. We may be there to do one thing, but God allows us to do another thing. And as Christians, we need to be ready whatever challenge God puts in front of us. We have a jail ministry. We have a two-man team down in Ironton every Saturday night to witness to the lost at the jail. I personally had the privilege to see many lost souls come to Christ through that witness. And uh, this doesn't have anything to do with Gideon's, but in years past, the prison was so overcrowded and we're all going to have to face a decision in that jail one of these days. To walk into that place is poor. I mean, I know these people have done the wrong things, but, you know, they used to have to sleep on the floor. They had one shower in each cell, just an old curtain hanging there. That's all, all the privacy they had. And uh, believe me, if you saw it, you would be like, now they've, uh, the state has come through. Prisoners in there, and actually, some of the cells there's only one inmate in, and so which is better for us if they want us to witness to them, we can. So, in that regards, it's much better. I'd like to talk to you, tell you a story of another young boy. This article first appeared in the Gideon Magazine, which we receive every first published in 1982 by his mother, Willa Townsend. She passed away three years ago and was published again for the first time. And I read it. But this is a story of her. This is told to the eyes of her mother. My husband and I lived in Mississippi, and we thought we had everything we needed for my husband was at the top of his profession. We had a new home, two cars, and we were blessed with six beautiful sons. I was happy and gave God credit for our good fortune. I also thanked him for my sons every day, but that wasn't the same as being saved. My second son, Otis, was born in 1948, and I was a very anxious mother. I scarcely let my boys out of my sight. I took them to school, ball games, and I picked them up, but I never took them to church. In fact, we never went to church. Otis was in the fifth grade when he got a new little testament from the Gideons in school. And I'll never forget the day he came rushing in and said, Mom, Mom, guess what? Mr. Gideon, today and he gave me <coughs> I said that's nice son but 
run a long play. Mama doesn't have time to listen to you. There was a man in our town who once had been a town alcoholic, but he got saved and then became a Sunday school teacher. He would see my children as they came out of the movie every Saturday and would invite them to Sunday school. I knew the children needed to be in church. So I told them if they were, if they want to go, I would take them and pick them up. Otis wanted to go, so I took him. And he carried his little red testament with him everywhere that he went. This went on for a while. Then they had Bible school at the church. Otis attended every day. And one day he came up very excited. He said, Mom, Mom. Say. He had his little book, open Bible, open to Romans. He said, Mama, let me show you how to say. I said, You go on, honey. Mama hasn't got the time right now. You go ahead and let Mama finish cooking. I'll listen to you later. I could see the disappointment on his face, but he went out, on out. He carried his little testament with him everywhere he went. His little pocket was too small for it, but he carried it anyway. Everybody he met, he said to them, Do you know Jesus? I would say to him, Don't do that. You're embarrassing people. Why not put your Bible away? You're going to go. He would say, Mama, I want to carry it with me. He really wanted to be a missionary so he could tell lots of people about Jesus. And he even began corresponding with the missionary to eat. Every day, Otis would say to me, Mama, let me show you how to be saved. But I never found the time to listen. One day, I was in the kitchen cooking. <coughs> I started praying, which is something I just didn't do. I said, Lord, there is something I need, and I just don't know how to get it. I want what Otis has. Then I thought, I don't know what they're teaching him down there at church. He's just too young. I'm not going to let him go. One Sunday morning he was playing, and I thought I'd let the time slip by. He came rushing in and said, I'm almost late for Sunday school, Mama. And I said, Mother doesn't have the time to take me today. He said, that's all right, Mama. If I run, I'll make it. That really bothered me, and I started praying again. I said, Lord, I know there's something I miss." Give me what Otis has. Right then, the Lord came into my heart. Otis was so happy that I was saved, he didn't stop there. He went on to work on his daddy and his other brothers. But before his daddy accepted the Lord, our next two sons were saved. We began to attend church regularly. One day, they called me from school saying, Otis, had a stomach ache. And he didn't eat lunch. I took him to the doctor. He had a little knot in his side. The doctor said he believed it was some kind of tumor. He wanted us to let a specialist examine him. So we took Otis to Hattiesburg. The doctor there said it was a tumor on his intestines that it could be removed with a little trouble. However, he said if it was inside the intestines, it would be a little more complicated. They took him to surgery and were gone a long time. The doctor came out and said it was cancer. That Otis had a 25% chance 
Father, and I pray. And notice came through the surgery with flying colors. He gained weight. It looked so good. The doctor had told us if the cancer came back, Otis would be gone in six months. Took him to the hospital, and every time someone came to visit him, Otis asked him to pray with him. He kept his New Testament with him all the time. This was two years after he had been saved, and he had never been without it. I stayed with him all the time, and one day Otis said, Listen, Mama, to the music. When I told him he was probably hearing a train in the distance, he said, No, Mama. His father walked in about that time and I was saying, Daddy, pick me up. Then he said, put me back down. I have everything in the world I never want. His father put him back down. We both looked at each other and reminded each other that we prayed. That will be done. came in and knelt by the bedside. He said, Mrs. Townsend, I have never had anyone touch me, Christian-wise, like this child has. We went home without Otis, but we knew he was all right. If I had not had Jesus with me, I could, have, I could not have made it through this time. For a while afterward, I would go to church to pick up school, to pick up the children. And I would still wait for Otis. I would see him coming out of school running with his New Testament in his hand. Otis is still blessing our family. All my sons are now saved and my grandchildren have been saved. When I lost my husband, I knew I did not really lose him. He went to be with Otis and Jesus. God has been good to me. He could have taken Otis before he was saved. But he gave us two years in which our entire fam family came to know Christ. God had it all planned. But my son said, Mr. Gideon,
that you see in doctors and dentist offices cost five dollars. This little testament, a dollar thirty. The Bible tells us in the book of James, the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man availeth much. For every three hands that are reaching out for Bibles today, there are only enough funds for two. And the Gideons are passing out over one million Bibles a week. Recently, God has allowed the Gideons into China. And you know, there are billions of people in China, They're not over the entire country yet. But God has made a way for the Gideons to get into China. It's true to His word. We need your financial support. 100% of your offering goes to the purchase of Bibles. And on behalf of the Gideons, I want to thank you, church, for your generosity to the Gideons down through the years. Count the souls <coughs> that saved because of your generosity. We would like you to consider using our Gideon card program. I didn't see you. I didn't see you have a card in <laughs> back there someplace. I didn't have to see you. But, uh, this is a program that you can use year-round, and you do not have to wait for the annual Gideon visit. They express your love and sympathy, sympathy to the bereaved who recognize those who are living. Ten Bibles placed in a hotel or motel room in the United States has a reasonable potential of reading. 23,000 readers in this six year average lifetime for that Bible. Now there's basically three cards that are thinking of you, a memorial card, and the in recognition card. The in, in recognition card would have been appropriate if you want to recognize like a recent uh, graduate like that who's gone through school and graduated, that would be appropriate. Uh, the in-memory card would be for someone who has passed away. And I can't think of a better legacy for someone to find an in-memory card and know that someone has received the Bible who would help them make the most important decision that they'll ever make their life, and that is accept Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. Thinking of you, card would be for someone maybe who's been ill in church, been absent for a while, and you just want to know that you're thinking about it. Also, we have uh, an envelope in our new racks that if you have one of your own personal cards, you can use that if you want. With all the explanations in there. And, uh, each of the Bibles costs, I'd say, $5. It's, it's well worth it. It's, you know, bless somebody and, like I say, help lead someone to Christ. Finally, the Gideons are an extension of this church. You cannot become a Gideon without the recommendation of your pastor. God has a purpose and a plan for each and every one of us. There's a purpose for you, maybe, to become a gay. <clears throat> he was 21 and staring at the mirror on the wall, alone in the motel room where he would soon try to end it all. Lying on the table right by the telephone was a light that shined like a beacon for a lost soul to go home. Just an old guinea Bible from a little roadside inn, and he cried when he read about Jesus. And now Jesus died for him. <coughs> the pages were worn and tattered, and the vine was cracked with age, and there in that old Gideon Bible he found God's saving grace. World War II would find him off in the foreign land, fighting a war with a hundred boys. Day in the heat of battle, he was shot by a bullet, they say. Why he didn't die was a miracle. Something got in the way. 
just an old Guinea Bible from a little roadside inn that he always carried with him for a lost soul he might win. His pages were worn and tattered, his binding was cracked with age, and that old Guinea Bible he found God saving grace. He turned 81 this morning down the old mill stream, all the streams <coughs> gathered round. Sad to see him leave. Smiling like a schoolboy, all dressed up in a Sunday best, he was off to see the Savior and lying on his chest, just an old gay mind from a little roadside inn. And he cried when he went about Calvary, how Jesus died for him. The page was worn and tattered, the binding was cracked with age, but there in that old gay Bible. Church, I want to thank you for your mission heart. You make a difference. You make an eternal difference. And I want to thank you for allowing me to share this time with you. Thank you. That's all the pastor. I appreciate this invitation. Play a 